Hello genealogists, this is Craig again from Just Genealogy. Last week while in New Orleans, I spent a couple of days wandering the battlefield at Chalmette and La Ronde. Not that there's much to wander around La Ronde since it's just kind of a roundabout in the middle of the highway. It's really not even a roundabout anymore. And the Chalmette National Cemetery, all of them in Chalmette, Louisiana. There's a web page for the cemetery, and I'll put that in the description. The cemetery is adjacent to the Shamut Battlefield, which was where the Battle of New Orleans was fought on 8 January 1815. In a future session, I will talk about the battlefield and the battlefield park. My third great-grandfather fought in the battle, so it's important to me. There is a sidewalk access to the cemetery from the battlefield, but vehicles have to go back out of the battlefield and down the highway to get into the cemetery. The cemetery exists along a single road that runs perpendicular to the Mississippi River. The original entrance is on the riverside, but with the creation of the levee, the entrance was moved to the opposite side of the cemetery. Unexpectedly, there are only four War of 1812 veterans buried at Chalmette and their names are inscribed on these markers, which are in several places in the cemetery. It names the soldiers and provides some insight into various markers and headstones that exist in the cemetery. The cemetery was originally established as Monument Cemetery in May 1864, and initially served as the final resting place of, for Union, Confederate, and African Americans. Changes in federal policy soon declared that only Union soldiers and sailors could be buried in national cemeteries, and the African Americans were moved upriver, and the Confederates were moved to Greenwood Cemetery No. 2 in New Orleans. I did not have time to go and visit Greenwood, but I did drive by it after a few hours spent at Metairie Cemetery on my way to morning call for good strong coffee and a trio of benets. The entrance to Greenwood is almost on the same intersection as the coffee shop. There are now approximately 16,000 service members and civilians, the rules changed yet again, buried at Chalmette. It includes veterans, about 14,000 have headstones, and there are a good number of unknowns that have markers. Usually there is a listing of headstones, but that link does not seem to be currently working, and I will put it in the description below in case it works in the future. In 1882, a monument was built on the river end of the cemetery by the Grand Army of the Republic. When it was erected, this was the entrance to the park. The Mississippi River is behind the brick wall in the background. My focus was to find the four War of 1812 soldiers that are buried there for future research and discussion. The unknown Tennessee soldier is part of the park audio tour, so he is on the map provided by the National Park Service. An audio tour also identifies four Civil War soldiers. Using the National Park Service materials, I was able to locate the only War of 1812 Battle of New Orleans veteran. It's not clear to me whether he died in the battle or later. What is known is that he was from Tennessee. In any event, he is an unknown soldier that was reinterred in the cemetery long after the battle. Unknown soldiers are identified in a variety of ways. This is probably the most common. Every headstone and marker is numbered as best that I could tell, and the cemetery is laid out in sections and then numbered somewhat consecutively by row within those sections. It is evident from the section map that some sections were lost on the riverside because of improvements to the levee. The numbering of the sections goes from 7 to 182, with the addition of four sections identified as 43A, 44A, 45, and 46A. Some are missing, like section 16. While doing so, I came across some interesting, at least for me, anomalies. First, one of the War of 1812 soldiers, Nathaniel Wells, and his spouse, Elizabeth S. Wells, have separate military headstones. Within a few feet, there were other couples with the same circumstance. So Nathaniel Wells was a major in the 13th Regiment of Mississippi Militia in the War of 1812, and he died on 16 October 1843. 
Elizabeth Wells, wife of Major Wells, USA, died on 10 June 1835. It's not clear to me whether she was buried first or whether she was brought after Nathaniel Wells had died into the cemetery. The other was a headstone shared by two soldiers. Uh, Kershaw of Illinois on the front in four, marker 4121 and John Johnson of Wisconsin on the back of that marker. I don't recall ever seeing that before in a national cemetery. Usually it's the wife that's on the back of the marker. One of these soldiers on the auto tour is Lyons Wakeman. Wakeman was born 16 January 1843 in Bainbridge, New York, the eldest of nine children. Wakeman signed on as a boatman doing manual labor on a coal barge in the Chenango Canal. After the first trip, Wakeman encountered recruiters from the 153rd New York Regiment and was paid a $152 bounty. It was just too good to refuse. The enlistment date was 30 August 1862. Since Wakeman was actually 17, there should have been a consent in the case of a minor, which was required for soldiers who were 17. This means that Wakeman was passing for 18 or older. When we look on the other side of Wakeman's enlistment papers, note that this has Wakeman passing as 21. Doing further research on Wakeman, I was able to find a couple of New York muster cards on ancestry. This is a workaround for the lack of the New York compiled military service records on Fold 3. So we're fortunate that we have these New York muster cards. In October 1862, the regiment departed for Washington, D.C., where they served on provost and guard duty in Alexandria, Virginia, and on Capitol Hill. In March, the regiment was sent to Louisiana to participate in the Red River Campaign, seeing action on 8 April 1864 and 9 April 1864 at Pleasant Hill. After repulsing the Confederates six times, the regiment retreated back down the Red River Fighting at Monette's Bluff on the 23rd, they reached the safety of Alexandria in early May. That's Alexandria, Louisiana, not Alexandria, Virginia. On 3 May 1862, Wakeman reported to the regimental hospital suffering from chronic diarrhea. Diarrhea is the number one cause for pensions after the Civil War. Dysentery was the number two reason. Wakeman was transferred to the Marine Hospital at New Orleans, arriving on the 22nd. Wakeman died on 19 June 1862 and is buried in Chalmette National Cemetery, located in Section 52, Grave 4066. There are also Civil War records and profiles, 1861 to 1865, on Ancestry. The Lion Wakeman entry on Ancestry includes a picture. I was unable to locate a final statement for Wakeman on Fold3.com. I'll talk about those at some point in the future. I was also unable to find Lyons Wakeman in either the 1850 or the 1860 census, where you would expect to find this person prior to the Civil War. So pause the video for a bit and think for a moment about what the possibilities might be for why Lyons Wakeman was not found in the census for those years and put your answer in the comments. I'll know how many people actually paused by the number of comments that I have in the comments section. The correct answer is that Lyons Wakeman was a woman who, both as a boatman and as a soldier, disguised herself as a man and then went off to war. No military records indicate that she was ever anything other than a male. So even through her sickness, she still was able to maintain her sense of being a male soldier. Her real name was Sarah Rosetta Wakeman. Her letters home have survived and were found in 1976. A book was published and is available on Amazon. An Uncommon Soldier by Lauren Cook Burgess and James M. McPherson. It's available both new and used on Amazon, and it's probably worth the read. I'm going to get a copy myself. 
Sarah Rosetta Wakeman also has a presence on the American Battlefield Trust. She has her own Wikipedia page. As an aside, Sarah can be found on the 1850 and 1860 census in the family of Harvey and Emily Wakeman. In 1860, she's living in Afton, Shenango County, New York at the age of 17. As another aside, there was in the War of 1812 a Captain Wakeman Lyon in Lawrence's regiment, New York Volunteers. Just some more things to look at down the road. In the background of this photo, you can see the Chalmette Battlefield and Memorial on the other side of the brick wall. So that is it for today. This has been Just Genealogy. We're converting people doing genealogy into genealogists day by day. I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much.